Hey everyone. So in today's video, as you can see by the title, I'm going to help you guys to get an idea of where you can obtain a EKG certification. So someone asked in the comments where and how can they get a EKG certification. So you would need to research in your area a technical college, technical school that offers um, some type of medical course. Usually that's going to be a technical college, a tech school. So you would look for something that offers maybe phlebotomy, maybe CNA, um, maybe a medical assistant, and of course EKG. Schools that offer different programs for medical assistance, sometimes they also offer EKG certification classes. And you can take it as like an add-on to a medical assistant program, but if you want to take it just um, straightforward as an EKG certification, just be sure that you speak with that representative of that school to ask if they offer just an EKG course. Um, so yeah, so. Once you take the EKG course, at the end of the course, there is an exam. And um, sometimes for some schools, it is a timed exam. You'll have a certain time period that you would need to complete the test. And for some hospitals, you would need to, after you get your certification, recertify it after maybe two years. You just have to check with the facility that you're gonna be hired as an EKG tech, or if you're just using EKG tech for your resume, just be sure you check with them if you need to be recertified for whatever position you'll be hired for. Also, normally, once you're hired for an EKG position, they will probably want you um, to have your, certi your CPR certification. Um, I know schools like Red Cross, um, American Red Cross offers CPR certification. Um, I can't think of any others, but like Red Cross is a is is one that um, I know of. So um, just research, do your due diligence, and see what schools are in your area for whatever city and state that you're in. So the next thing I want to discuss is the most common EKG rhythms that you'll see when you perform an EKG test. So don't mind me, I'm going to be looking down at my notes. But the most common um, EKG rhythms that you will see usually is a normal sinus rhythm, okay? Normal sinus rhythm is normally 60 to 100 beats per minute. Normally you want to see it um, a heart rhythm between 40 and 100 beats per minute. Um, anything below 40 is considered like dangerous. Anything above 100 can be also dangerous. So the doctors will determine if it's going to be something of a concern for the patient. Um, the next type of rhythm would be sinus brady, sinus tachycardia, sinus arrhythmia, arrhythmia um, atrial tachycardia, SVT, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, heart blocks. When you take your EKG test, sometimes the heart blocks look similar. So that's just an FYI to remember how to dif differentiate between the different types of heart blocks. And those heart blocks can be the um, one AV block, the second degree Mobitz one, or the second degree Mobitz two. Um, and then, of course, you have the third degree block complete. Another type would be junctional tachycardia. And the worst one you would see is ventricular asystole. That's no heartbeat at all. So... That's just a few notes for you guys. I know this isn't a detailed video of each heart rhythm. Um, it's almost eight o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry, I know these last couple videos, I'm halfway awake and it's because it's so early in the morning. So I don't know if I'll make a video about each type of heart rhythm. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up 
and give you some information about being an EKG tech and I hope this video does help you in some shape or form. I'll see you guys in the next video.